Media studies is a vast subject spanning films, video games, social media, the lot. So whether you're new to media studies and you want a taste of what to expect, or you just want to brush up on what you already know, this will be your ultimate A to Z guide on media studies. A is for auteur. It suggests that the director of a film is the most important visionary in the creation of a film. So it says a director is more akin to an author or an artist in terms of how they have their own visual style, how they express their ideas. Take Tarantino for example. His unmistakable uh, signature shots, his humour, his non-linear narratives. Now critics of this theory would say that all of the other talent behind a film go unrecognised. B is for the big six. These are the massive conglomerates that dominate Hollywood cinema. They are Disney, Warner Brothers, Fox, Universal, Paramount and Sony. Far more than the film studios of the golden age of cinema, these companies now consist of hundreds of smaller companies that have the means of making spin-off games, websites, all which work in synergy with each other so that no longer is a film just a film, it's an entire enterprise. C is for camera work. Now this is a hugely important area of media studies because what the audience feels towards the world is going to be largely determined by what the camera looks at and how it does so. I've made a video about cinematography which goes into far more detail which you can watch here. D is for demographics. This is statistical information which relates to an audience. Now I find it quite scary just how clear a picture a media producer can put together of their audience based on things like their age, their income, where they're from, their religion. This information is gold dust to them for two reasons. Number one, they can ensure that their content is tailored so that the audience will want to buy their product. Number two, they can pass this information on to advertisers who can then target specific groups um, by advertising in their product. E is for editing. So if the camera is the eye through which we see the film world, then the edit is the brain which organizes and filters this information. Editorial decisions in filmmaking, such as what shot should follow the other, how long a shot lasts, how they transition to each other not only establish a continuity that allow the audience to follow the story, but also have the means to create additional meaning. Look at this classic example from Hitchcock. Now we have a close-up. Then we show what he sees. Let's assume he saw a woman holding a baby in her arms. Now we cut back to his reaction to what he sees. And he smiles. Now what is he as a character? He's a kindly man. Now we'll put in uh, a piece of film of a girl in a bikini. He looks, girl in a bikini, he smiles. What is he now? A dirty old man. F is for French New Wave, which refers to the young French filmmakers, auteurs in fact, who experimented with film to take it in completely new directions. They rejected Hollywood's established conventions such as linearity and continuity and sought out new ways of expressing themselves in what they considered to be an intellectual art form. If you want to jump straight into French New Wave, check out Hiroshima Mon Amour or Clio from 5 to 7, two films that really brought attention to the French New Wave. G is for genre. This is the classification of a text based on its generic conventions. So to use a really obvious example, a sci-fi will consist of aliens and space. Now this is very cliche, and I'd argue it's the job of filmmakers to challenge conventions to progress genres even as they're developing. H is for hypodermic needle. Um, it's a rather dated view that the audience is passive to the influence of the media. In other words, it's basically saying the audience is powerless to the messages that they're getting from the media and they'll believe whatever they're told. Now there's plenty to support this idea. Look at World War II propaganda or this infamous Orson Welles dramatization of War of the Worlds, which he presented as a news report and early radio listeners actually believed it was happening. What I can see of the object itself doesn't look very much like a meteor. At least not the meteors I've seen. It looks more like a huge cylinder. 
I is for intertextuality. This is simply when a text makes reference to another media text to create extra meaning. Now, this may be done by paying homage to another text, or it can be very specific. In this example, people who get the link to Indiana Jones may find an extra layer of humor, but the link is not essential to understanding this. Why, you little... J is for Jenkins. Henry Jenkins is a contemporary communications theorist whose work on spreadable media is well worth a look. He's produced some of the go-to research on how the internet has transformed the entire media landscape. If we think about YouTube, many of the people on YouTube are producing media because they, they're something they vitally want to share. K is for key concepts, and there's four of them, which you can remember with the handy acronym LIA. L is for media language, so in film they use camera angles and editing and mise-en-scene. In magazines they will use uh, layouts, typography. I is for institution, the study of who makes the media, what are their ideologies. A is for audience, the study of who watches the media, why do they watch it, and R is for representation, the study of how the media represents our world. L is for Laura Mulvey, a British feminist who, in the 1970s, produced her seminal work on male gaze theory. In a nutshell, it explains how the male-dominated film industry views women from the male's perspective. You're better off watching uh, a film I've made specifically about male gaze theory here. M stands for mise-en-scene, a French word which literally means within the scene. So this literally means the set, the props, the makeup, the hair, anything that you can see within the frame. Now, I always tell my students, nothing that you see on film is accidental. The choice of paintings on a wall, the color clothing that a character wears. As media students, it's our job to question why has the media producer done this? What kind of meaning are they trying to create? N is for narrative. This is how the story is told, and I don't just mean the plot, I mean the actual structure of it. So think of a TV show or a film as a series of chapters. The beginning, the middle, the end. How does each one progress the narrative, enable plot? 75% of the stories you're going to tell will work better on a dramatic basis, on a dramatically engaging basis to be told from a linear way. But there is that 25% out there that you know, can be more resonant by telling it this way. And I think in the case of both Reservoir Dogs and Pulp Fiction, it gains a lot more resonance being told in this kind of like wild way. O is for Ofcom. In the UK, the organization that is responsible for regulating all media communications, they do this by setting out guidelines for each media sector and fielding complaints from the public. For example, this recent episode of Call the Midwife, which viewers found very upsetting. <laughs> P is for Prop, Vladimir Prop, the, the Russian film critic who suggested that in all texts, several archetypal characters served narrative roles. A villain will always cause a disruption that needs to be resolved. A dispatcher will send the hero on the quest to restore order. A princess who will reward the hero's efforts. You still see many of these roles in today's films. Q is for Queer Theory. It's an area of research which suggests that gender and sexuality are constructs of society rather than nature. In terms of the media, it means that exaggerated representations of femininity and masculinity, like this, Welcome to Baywatch. Or homosexuality and heterosexuality, like this, Daniel, hi. Could you make me a woman? Honey, I'm so happy only serve to reinforce the idea that they are expected norms of society and create difference between us and them. R is for reception theory. It's the idea that uh, based on your cultural background, your age, your gender, you'll probably interpret a media text in one of three ways. You may agree with the media producer's uh, message. In this case, killing in video games is harmless fun. You may sort of agree I'm not sure about all of this killing, but it's such a fun game. Or you may completely disagree with it. I don't care if it's a video game. Violence is always wrong. For more in-depth explanation, check out this video I made on reception theory. S is for stereotypes, a representation which consists of a few exaggerated traits. Stereotypes are often used in the media to quickly establish character types for the audience. Think of the stereotypical bad guy. British. Bold. Dressed in black. 
pale. People, however, can often find stereotypes very insulting because they can present broad social groups, such as African Americans or homosexuality, as a one-size-fits-all type. T is for Todorov. Now, there are many different theorists who worked around narrative, but Todorov is the granddaddy of all of them. He suggested that all narratives consist of several different developments. So we start off with an equilibrium, the world is fine. We then get some kind of disruption when something bad happens. And obviously this is resolved and we have a new equilibrium. Everything goes back to normal. These can be broken down into further subcategories, but broadly fit any film that you can think of. U is for uses and gratification theory. It looks at why audiences engage with the media texts that they do, be it for entertainment, a sense of personal identity, social interaction, or just to find out information. Now, unlike hypodermic needle theory, it suggests the audience is an active participant. In other words, they use the media rather than being passively controlled by it. To find out more about uses and gratification theory, watch this video. V is for viral. Now, as opposed to traditional media distribution, where a text is exhibited and people choose whether or not to engage with it, going viral is when something is shared from person to person, like a virus, and it literally appears in their inbox, be it through email or recommended on Facebook. Now, this is the holy grail of marketing campaigns to make something go viral, because you're far more likely to engage with something that's been sent to you by a friend. W is for widescreen, the term used to describe aspect ratios greater than 1.37 by 1, which is the size of a 35mm frame. There are various widescreen formats typically determined by what the video was shot on, but in our homes you're probably familiar with 16 by 9 which is what you're watching now and what you see on most, most TV shows. This means regardless of resolution, the aspect ratio of what you're watching will always be 16 horizontal to 9 vertical. X is for X-rated. Now, in America, the MPAA started issuing uh, the X rating to films which contained graphic violence, sexual scenes, or bad language. But the rating wasn't trademarked, so anybody could apply it to their films. Now, the porn industry capitalized on this in the 70s by using multiple Xs to imply their material was extremely explicit, hence XXX. In response, the MPAA eventually agreed in 1990 to a new NC-17 rating, uh, which was trademarked, and they are the only people who have the ability to award it. Y is for Young and Rubicum, who came up with the cross-cultural consumer characterization model. This identifies the consumption habits of most audiences by defining seven types of people. For example, perhaps you're an aspirer who seeks out media and products that give you a sense of elitism. Or perhaps you're a conformer who engages with whatever is trending in the world right now. And finally, Z is for Zolly, the slightly less formal word for um, a zooming dolly shot used iconically by Hitchcock to achieve this vertigo effect. As the name suggests, the effect is achieved by moving the camera towards or away from the subject whilst zooming in or out to keep the subject the same size. So there you go, there's an awful lot to explore in media studies and we've only just scratched the surface, but if you're interested in the subject and you want to find out more, this gives you a great starting point for some of the key uh, ideas that we discuss. As always, thank you for watching and if you have any questions, please do feel free to let me know in the comment section below.